All right, it's operation eight, and um, this is supposedly the last operation where we can expect heavy changes, or where we could have expected heavy changes from the class system in Gears Five. So I would say it's about time that I'm basically showcasing you the setups of the cards that I have been using um, for Horde. There will be a separate video about escape. And in this video, I'm going to go through all the classes at once, since I'm a lazy video editor. <laughs> and instead, I will provide you the timestamps to jump to each class that I explain uh, below in the video description, as well as in the comments for mobile users, in case that's still a thing. So you can quickly jump to the class you want to see the setup that I'm using for the class. Don't get me wrong, there might be better setups that don't suit you or that just other people have discovered that might be better. There are broken setups that I sometimes may not use for some other reasons. Um, so don't think this is the best setup that you can be with or work with. It's just the setups that I have been using. So let's start off with Blade Master, uh, a CQC class that I don't play that very often. But the cards I'm going for with Blade Master is usually Blade Dancer, um, simply because of the reason that you get more damage, the more kills you do, or the more enemies you bleed out. Which can be very handy if you want to take out bigger enemies or something like bosses. You can kill a few enemies, then hop over to the boss, and the boss should die pretty quickly, usually. Thrill of the Hunt is pretty obvious. Um, you want with a class like Blade Master, a lot of damage resistance since you're gonna be in very, very close combat. So, Thrill of the Hunt is kinda necessary to have. Um, pretty odd choice that I'm going for is Nimble. Uh, I don't see many people using Nimble, so um, the reason I am using Nimble is I wanna be fast on the battlefield. And Nimble allows me to just slide around like a maniac on the battlefield, which is absolutely perfect. Um, you can replace this card if you feel like it. Uh, for instance, you could go with Brutal Claw, uh, this buffs actually your melee bleed damage, your regular melee bleed damage, but I'm not using this card because I'm usually running around with a Breaker Mace. In theory, you could go for Energy Surge, but I personally just don't recommend it. You're usually not around taps unless it's a, a very, very small map like Overload, so I personally don't recommend using Energy Surge. I uh, could go for ambush, but it's kind of rare you really actually get that kill from behind. So it's kind of random in a way, and usually you get your ultimate back in no time, so it's kind of pointless to use ambush. Uh, Nasher mastery, you're not going to really use the Nasher, you're just meleeing your way through, so it's pointless. On the flank is similar to ambush, you can use it if you want to, but I personally don't recommend it. Usually you're killing enemies from the front and not from the back, unless they go down, in which case you do actually kill them from the back, but in that case on the flank it's already pointless. Theoretically you can use it against a boss like a Matriarch, but I just feel more comfortable with Nimble. Venomblade is not useful in Horde. Shock Shield is actually useless, in my opinion, because whenever you trigger your ultimate, you will be pretty much at 100% damage resistance, as long as you're in close range. And even on a further range, you actually still have a lot of damage resistance, which basically Shock Shield is just going to be pointless for you. It's not really going to uh, help you in any way. Shock Chain, however, can be helpful, so you can use this one, especially if you have multiple enemies around, or if you want to take down a flying enemy like a Guardian. In that case, it can actually be helpful. Midrange Reflection, of course, could be helpful as a, as an, uh, a different card instead of uh, Nimble so that you have a little bit more damage resistance on the range, but usually you're within range and you're bleeding, so you constantly get your health back, you're on high damage resistance, so I personally don't see why mid-range reflection is really going to be that useful. Deep pockets is pointless, random resistance is pointless, banana clip is pointless, and efficient execution is pointless since you don't really need ammo except for the mace, but you actually have to do executions, which you are not going to do because they all bleed out, so it's pointless for you. So yeah, the, the, the cards you would really choose from that I would suggest instead of Nimble would be probably Shock Chain, which is the only one, uh, because then you can take out the flying enemies as well. Then Brawler, you want more melee damage, which will increase your bleed damage 
and it's going to be really handy if you pair it up with a mace. And of course, short range deflection, since you are always going to be within five meters to actually kill those enemies. So paired short range deflection with thrill of the hunt, with the passive, with the ultimate, you're going to be over 100% damage resistance as long as you're within the, uh, the enemies. Paired with the mace, you're definitely going to be at 100% damage resistance. However, the, the breaker mace still loses ammo if you get shot, especially if you reach the 30s wave, basically, the 31 wave thing if you're going for the full horde. And, um, and I think that's kind of like what you need to know. What I usually do, first 30 waves or like the waves before double damage kicks in, it really doesn't matter how you play. You got to be a little bit careful against enforcer enemies That's and against boom shots maybe. Potentially mulchers as well, of course. But other than that, you can just really go in there. Once double damage kicks in, what I personally do is when I see an annoying enemy, I trigger the ultimate first and then go in. That usually keeps my breaker mace alive so that I can reach them easily. And then I just keep running around. When I see the ammo get slow on the breaker mace, I just try to rush for an ammo box, basically put the mace on the back, use the other weapon, try to rush for some kind of like uh, ammo box or anything. And that's kind of like how I play the Blade Master. Heading off to Demolitionist. Um, in my case, I'm actually going with Confirmed Kill. Um, I have denied this card for a very, very, very long time because it felt buggy and it actually, I think, is buggy. Um, but once you have your perk for the cooldown up to level 10, which will basically save you uh, three minutes of your ultimate, Confirmed Kill has a slight chance to instantly recharge your entire ultimate so that you can trigger it again. And with this kind of build here, you really only need one locker and you should never actually need a second one. And the only thing you really have to use is the boom shot and your ultimate and that's it. You really don't have to use anything else. Um, with confirmed kill, you can perfectly use your ultimate mid waves, and as soon as your cooldown perk is on level 10, you can pretty much use your ultimate every wave, or at least every second wave. Uh, so in that case, confirmed kills is, is absolutely perfect. It's about five or so kills that you have to do to get it up to a decent level. And I really can't quite explain how the ultimate sometimes goes over 50% of recharge instantly and sometimes it's always just 50%. I really can't quite explain that. But paired with spotter support, I noticed that as soon as one ally marks any kind of target, your ultimate box out and drops multiple artilleries sometimes on the same target. So spotter support is a must have Com uh, co uh, combined with confirmed kill to actually finish off the enemies with the artillery and not with the bleed to get this cooldown. And that's, I think, why it sometimes bugs out. Once the cooldown perk is on level 10, I always had the ultimate recharge to pretty much exactly 50% or more. And assault, rare occurrences, 100% instantly. Razor Hell is obvious. You need to do bleeding damage to finish off these bosses. So you want to use that anyways. Custom boom shot, kind of obvious too. You're way more accurate with the boom shot than with the Lancer GL. The Lancer GL is a bit slow and can miss targets, especially since it's doing this kind of like curved uh, artillery shot. So I recommend only using the boom shot. You really don't need the, the Lancer GL. And officer's prerogative, so your ultimate is may, way more effective. Um, with this layout itself, if you have bosses, uh, for instance, a Kestrel, or a Carrier, or a Matriarch, or a Swarmek, um, then I actually recommend not profiting from spotter support. Just ignore it, only mark the boss, drop it on the boss, because you will instantly get your ultimate back in most cases. Because it does so much damage, so much bleed, then you can drop it a second time and the boss is pretty much dead. If it, if it doesn't die from the first drop, it should die from the second drop. Carrier's probably, uh, Carrier and Swarmek are probably the only exceptions because the Swarmic you usually have to finish off with the blisters and the artillery won't really do that for the back blisters. It usually pops any other blister than the back blisters unless it's stunned, in which case you can actually one-shot it if you get a lucky. But it, the general idea really just is to use the ultimate on bosses solely 
without marking any other enemies. With that, you get to get the highest benefit from it. Um, theoretically, you can go for bullet boost, but I just find it not useful enough, so I personally don't use it, especially with this kind of layout right here, because it basically demands you to play a bit of a different style. You can go for like a frag grenade style, but that's just not my type. Um, but you will probably find videos out there that use the others, the other kind of setup that doesn't require a weapon locker. But usually the demolition is as soon as you join in a horde match, you pretty much always get a weapon locker first. So that's kind of like the, the best setup you could really go for to be perfectly efficient against any boss or basically, basically anything on a map. Concussive strike can be useful at times. I personally don't use it anymore because usually you have other people just taking care of, of, of enemies and stunning. It just won't really be worth it anymore. Uh, custom Lancer GL is told. I prefer the boom shot over the, over the Lancer GL, so it's not going to be useful in that case. You don't necessarily ever have to plant more than two grenades, so don't take Gambit unless you pair with grenades such than the complete uh, grenade build. I personally don't recommend to use that. Um, good kill is actually a pretty funny card, a pretty strange card. Um, basically, it keeps dropping ammo pouches, and for whatever reason, those kills don't have to be within five meters. It's it's. I don't understand it. It's, it seems to be completely random at times. You need teammates, yes, but they just drop randomly in my case. I, I never found a consistent setup that they actually just kept dropping within five meters from an ally when I kill a target. I just never ever have seen it consistently doing that. It just always went, were, was randomly around where I kill enemies. So I don't know quite understand how the good kill works, but the ammo pouches that are dropped they actually are way more beneficial than the normal ammo pouches that you can, or the, the ammo boxes, sorry, that you can find on the map. Although the ammo boxes do grant explosives ammo, um, the ammo pouches do not. But ammo pouches are very handy if you have some classes like an infiltrator or a blade master running around, since they usually need to refill their ammo. In that case, good kill can actually come in handy, especially if you have modifiers that kind of limit your abilities with either bleed or explosives, in which case you can, for instance, swap out razor hail, or instead of doing a, a boomshot build, just go for the lancer build and kind of pair it up with good kill to keep getting ammo, basically. That's kind of like a little bit the idea here if you want to really use good kill. Or you can, of course, so about confirmed kill with good kill if you just want to help your teammates. In that case, you just have to make sure you can not use your ultimate that often, but you can still use it perfectly fine against bosses, for instance. So a pretty funny card that good kill. Uh, inspired, pointless, don't ever use it. <laughs> You're never really going to benefit too much from a veteran, even if there's a veteran, because that guy's just going to do everything himself. So pointless, in my opinion. <laughs> Lancer Shield Mastery. Fun fact, it's actually broken. For whatever reason, it doesn't only reduce the recoil of the Lancer Shield, it, re it reduces the recoil of every single weapon. So in Horde... I would say it's probably not useful at all, because usually you don't really use anything that demands a low recoil, unless, of course, you really want to play a non-explosive build, like a more a ballistic build. In that case, Lancer Shield Master is actually a pretty good card. I only really use this one in a few escapes, so I'm not going to go more deeper into this card itself. And Launcher Mastery... Once you get the hang of it to reload your weapons, you really don't need this one. And that's about the demo. Nothing really else to tell here. If you're marking multiple enemies to drop your ultimate, don't force yourself to mark five targets. If you have four, you can't mark this fifth one, just drop it. Just go for it, because the amount of time it takes you probably to last to mark the fifth one. You just lost too much time already. Plenty of enemies died already, so it's kind of like pointless to really waste too much time to find that fifth target that you can mark. So keep it around four-ish targets and then drop it. Uh, infiltrator, um, I guess I don't really have to talk much about it. There's really only one setup that you have can use that is really beneficial, which is Blood Resonance, Steam Batteries, Enhanced Steam, Lesseration, and Reaper. Um, this is the combo to be perfectly effective right off the bat and throughout the entirety of the Horde. With an infiltrator, you don't require any perks, although they do help. 
and you really only have to play with an Asher and a Overkill to run around. The Overkill not even being mandatory but helping. Um, and the only thing you really use your ultimate for is to kill boss type enemies or bigger enemies basically like wardens or guardians something like that just keep in mind that you have to be relatively close to actually output enough damage and preferably you want to shoot the enemy you want to use your ultimate on first because then they will start bleeding and then you will land an even heavier blow on them uh, if you use your ultimate and you shoot it appears that the ultimate or basically the passive which is the 10 times damage uh, kind of like it lasts for a little bit of period of time for like a second or so that's basically why you can land, land multiple shots within uh, exiting a single ultimate like with the overkill you can land two shots usually in which case you don't necessarily have to bleed them you'll st still do quite a, uh, a lot of damage so it's a bit not quite perfectly described so that's just to let you know i've seen people using chain but in my opinion i just find it completely pointless i'm not using it anymore that was the old setup with chain but right not right now it's in my opinion not useful anymore at all healing jolt uh nope <laughs> you need stim not health so it's not really gonna be helpful because the stim provides you the damage resistance you get with enhanced uh with yes with enhanced stim and uh, so that's kind of like how it works. A uh, thing to note also is with Reaper, since it provides 50% stim, and stim batteries uh, increase the stim by 230%, it doesn't mean you have to do five kills to get up to these 230% or something like that, or in theory, seven kills. Um, it actually means you technically have here then 330% stim total that you can get and you still only have to land two shots to fill it up completely. So it kind of like fills one, uh, what is it, 165% per shot of the steam. It's just a little thing to note. Cloak batteries, well, you really don't need it. You don't need custom Nasher, you're doing enough damage already. You no longer need the overkill ammo capacity. Uh, <laughs> driven is pointless, you already have damage resistance from the steam. You will learn to reload eventually, so you don't need the uh, longer or, or greater active reload bars. You don't need the recall and the overkill stock, just fire it a little bit slower. Just hold the trigger down and release a little later so you have a more accurate shot. Don't spam it and you should be good. And well, you don't really need long reach either uh, because you, usually power on the map just doesn't matter anymore. So that's kind of like the infiltrator setup, pretty straightforward, pretty much everybody's using it since it's the, the most efficient at the very moment. Going down to Barksman, there's a bunch of different setups that you can use. Um, preferably, at least what I'm using is uh, long shot handling, exploit weakness, explosive critical hit, modified long shot and ambush. And this really wrecks wave after wave after wave. Especially since Marksman gets his ultimate back insanely quickly this is kind of like the setup that you absolutely demolish waves. You cannot kill bosses effectively, but you can destroy any other wave. And obviously your ultimate is not extended, but with long shot handling you can take out so many enemies in a row as long as you land your shot. And with explosive critical hit it will just destroy surrounding enemies immediately. <laughs> you really don't need critical parade to extend it, because you will get back your ultimate so quickly. It's really not worth using Critical Parade, you're just wasting ultimate during basically the, the, the cooldown screen, uh, the scoreboard screen, to um, for nothing, pretty much. And all these cards are just for buffing damage, so that your uh, long shots really actually one shots pretty much anything, including science or the other ones, especially during the ultimate. An alternative build would probably include icy precision uh, and, and in case instead of maybe explosive critical hit or long shot handling depending on your playstyle. Um, probably if you would swap out long shot handling then maybe you would go for critical parade. There's some kind of like uh, speedrun setup that you can pair up with veteran. In that case you actually need icy, icy precision and critical parades. 
and in our case we swapped out modified long shot and explosive critical hit because you want to keep extending your ultimate in that case you may not kill targets with the explosion you have to shoot them you have to actually do critical kills this card is, has a strange description in the small description of the card itself right here uh, it says critical hits but it's actually critical kills as described in the deep dive description on the right so just to let you know that and uh, that's why explosive critical hits would be counterproductive. So in case you were doing the, the, the veteran marksman setup, just get rid of all of that kind of stuff and instead basically go for... Yipsy dipsy. I have to go to the right place. Not this, but get icy precision, critical parades, you still want long shot handling, exploit weakness and uh, ambush. That's kind of the, set, the card setup that you want. The, the reason for long shot handling is that Basically, when the veteran's ultimate is out and you have no second veteran around, you can keep trying to uh, have your ultimate running through the wave with long shot handling by landing multiple shots in a row, since most of the enemies are still one shot. And during the ultimate, you basically use your Marksa to kill any enemy with icy precision with, with ease, kind of. So that's, that's why you want to use this kind of setup right here. If you were going for the veteran marksman combo and for the other cards they are not really useful for horde at all um, they're rather just a waste of a slot for more power in your arsenal um, you won't really play with an m bar so you don't need modified m bar or m, m, m bar ammo capacity unless you want to do atrium with the relic m bar in which case you can basically one shot a carrier even with double health on master if you actually land that critical hit then you can really actually one shot it during the, the x-ray ultimate but other than that it's pointless you don't encounter snipe because that damage resistance is not going to help you at all you still go down with one shot you don't need patience because your ultimate returns quickly enough already uh, you don't need master marksman because you will get those reloads done eventually now steady hand might be somewhat useful ish but the camera shake is sometimes uh, hard enough that it still will make you miss targets or, or you're already down anyway, so I recommend not to use it. And that's Marksman. And now for Nomad. I'm not really a Nomad player, um, so my setup is technically completely wrong. So I guess I could say I recommend not to use it, or I can definitely say it's not at all the strongest setup that you can have. I don't quite know the exact setup, but I know it involves execution shields, doing a ton of executions to get your stim and finishing them off like bosses or whatever with armored shots. So you actually either run around with a, a lancer or a retro lancer to chain execute them and the enemies basically. And during at the execution, you're invulnerable and you pair that up with uh, let me just see here really quick where it is. Uh, I just need to find a menace, I think. Yes, menace. You pair it up with menace, and then you can just keep chaining your ultimate over and over again. And you kind of like use the consecutive shot and the armored shot since you keep getting stim to bleed out any other enemy that's not really running away or something like a boss. So that's kind of like how you would do it. But the exact setup, I'm not an, I'm not aware of how you would actually use it. It's just what I've seen and what I imagine people are using. But this is not my playstyle, so I'm not doing it. And my playstyle is sniping, <laughs> therefore the setup that I have here. So the Nomad class in my uh, case is basically the Marksa sniper class. Um, and you can actually do some serious damage with it. So once you land your critical hits, this setup right here is actually going to do some serious damage against anything. Um, but obviously you're very vulnerable, you're not really relying on your ultimate unless enemies get too close. And it's not the most effective, there's better ones. Um, but that's kind of like the, the setup that I use, armor shot for bleeding. Intimidation for putting them in fear when I do a headshot so I can get steam back with lifeline. And consecutive shot to keep buffing the damage up with every hit, that's critical. And a Marksa Mastery to actually have a devastating Marksa. So the Marksa here really will do some serious damage with this kind of setup as long as you have Stim. And if you have a Veteran or a, a Combat Medic or a Anchor around that provides Stim, even better. 
it will do even more damage. But as told, it's not necessarily the best setup. Um, you can play around how you want, there's probably a bunch of different setups you can choose from. It's really hard to tell which is the best setup, but as told, Execution Shield and Menace work very uh, great together. You can buff it up with Concussive Rounds to stun some drones and stuff to get, have uh, easier executions. They're a little bit too close. And I have used some setups that included acceleration and rain down in the past, but that was mainly because armor shot was broken paired up with consecutive shot. Since they have now fixed it, I basically have no no more card slots left to use. So that's why I'm not using acceleration and rain down anymore. But basically I was using these cards in exchange of armor shot and lifeline before. That's kind of like the idea I was going for. Um, Right, you actually also need phase for the execution build. So execution sh shield, phase, menace, armor shot, and the last one, I have no idea. Possibly concussive rounds or something else, I don't know. Uh, you don't need power sprint, completely useless. I was talking about acceleration before, I was talking about concussive rounds before. You don't need national proficiency, completely useless. You can use nomad armor with the kind of like execution, execution build, um, but it's not really going to help you too much once double damage kicks in. So more like an escape card than a horde cloud card. Fearsome Aura, it only affects the ultimate itself when triggering it. Feel free to go for it to have an extended area, but I personally don't think that's the best card to go for. Um, precision resistance is pointless, you will go one shot down anyways. And Terror, once again, only affects the while triggering the ultimate. So personally, both Fearsome Aura and Terror are not the best cards to go for. Unless you're like in escape or something, I don't know. We're basically just going for spamming the ultimate over and over and over and over again, kind of thing, sort of. But you will probably basically lack the extra damage from something like armor shot or whatever if you want to really use fearsome aura and or terror as the cards. So a, a complex class which involves using a lot of fear states, which can piss off other classes that are in your in your horde game. Um, personally, not my favorite class, although I do sometimes use it just for funsies, but then I actually go for this kind of sniper build, not the uh, kind of execution build. But up to you, if you feel the class, go for it. It's not my personal favorite. That covers the, arm, uh, the assault classes. We're going down to Anchor. You probably may have noticed Anchor is, in my opinion, the strongest class, the most versatile class and the most self-sufficient class you can go for. It can basically do everything except for <laughs> helping with engineering. Um, in that case, you kind of really have to rely on your teammates, preferably an engineer, but you don't need a locker. You can take down any kind of enemy with just the ball talk. That's it. You don't need anything else than the ball talk. With barrier feedback, extending your barrier every once in a while is really gonna chain your damage more and more and more since the barrier itself, as told from the passive, um, deals an additional 50% damage when you shoot through it or your teammates shoot through it. And keeping that barrier up longer will help this extra 50% damage to keep going for you and your potential teammates. Paired with bullet chain, you can wrap this up to a 250% damage. Paired with the 30% from the passive for your Baltog, you're already at, what is it, 280% damage. And I believe there is another two. Yes, there's a critical hit perk and there's a damage perk, which is another 100%. So in theory, you can wrap this up to a total of 380% more damage on your Baltog per shot which is absolutely devastating, so bullet chain is a must-have card you want to go for. Barrier feedback to keep extending it, barrier battery just have a longer duration instantly, so you can have it longer all the way through. Harness energy to be the most helpful supportive class, even though it is a tank class, in your entire team, since it grants steam to everybody, no matter where they are, and yourself as well, as long as they keep shooting your barrier. And obviously bloody shot to apply the bleeding damage to, for instance, bosses like a matriarch or a flock or whatever you can basically think of. And with that kind of setup, you're absolutely destroying the horde. 
I myself have done a solo hold with this kind of setup. So yeah, it's definitely possible. You can, as an addition, use a boom shot and probably a drop shot as a second weapon in case you get a swarm mech and you have troubles destroying the back blisters. Um, but it's not necessarily mandatory. Just keep in mind, bullet chain does stack your boom shot damage as well. So it basically buffs any kind of damage except for heavy weapon damage. So that's kind of like why you really want to use uh, the vault hog all the time. Uh, instead of going for something like a tri shot. People were using the tri shot, but even back then, in my opinion, it was absolutely pointless to use it. You were way better off with a vault hog. Or even then use a long shot for very long range targets and not a tri shot. Adrenaline Chunky is a uh, escape card. Venom Recharge is an escape card. Venom Resistance is an escape card. Lethal Barrier can be helpful if you have triple melee damage, since the barrier applies melee damage. But other than that, nah, just don't use it. In your face, it's just not worth it. It's just not worth it that the targets will force, be forced to focus on you, because they will most likely focus on you anyway. So, pointless. You don't need to dodge anything, you already have your shield, so it's not really use, useful to be <laughs> dodging those precision rifles, mostly you go down by one shot anyways. Sometimes it may be useful to use barrier boost to have your teammates uh, basically protected better and benefit a bit more from it, but it's kind of like situational that you really want to use barrier boost, just keep in mind you have to swap out one of these cards if you want to do so. Baltic Bandolier, you definitely don't need that, because you will have more than plenty of enough ammo. You can just perk your ammo resupply for level 5 and you will have more than enough ammo. It only crazy tough, just don't use it, you don't need the additional health, you have your shield. And, well, there is no friendly fire in Horde, so heads up is useless as well. And that's Anchor, probably the best class, one of my favorites, if not the favorite class. And works pretty decently. Brawler. Um, well, I'm using the Tackle Smash build, uh, as described by someone, I believe it was Smarten? It was either Smarten or Smudgebat, I can't remember. It, there is a video out there showcasing this this kind of setup. Um, they weren't using Soothing Warmth, as far as I remember, they were probably using all the glory. Uh, the reason I use Soothing Warmth is uh, because it's perfect against bosses because then you can keep smashing into the boss. And uh, that's why I'm using Soothing Warmth. Uh, that's kind of basically your kind of like wild card uh, that you can go for. Um, but this Tackle Smash build does require to have the other four cards. You need Killing Time, you need Perk Up, you need Torch Tackle, and you need Damage Dash to get all the damage resistance and to keep extending your ultimate through the wave to have enough health and to basically get back your health quick enough and paired with the taps that you really want to focus on protecting you should have more than enough health to withstand most of the damage that you will be taking by running around with your ultimate there just keep tackling around and this this, this kind of setup works best if you have triple melee damage around because in that case you pretty much one shot almost any enemy all the time. And it's actually going to be a lot of fun using that kind of uh, build in triple melee damage. In which case explosive damage will be reduced, so all the glory is already going to be pointless. And that's why I even more recommend Soothing Warmth as your build. So this is the Tackle Smash build. You can also go for a ranged build. In which case it will look something like this. It, you will have all the glory. You will have... Um, inner fire, probably, I can't remember quite now, I'll have to double check, perk up, play with fire, pyromanic, I think that's the setup that I'm using in that case, yes, pretty much. Um, so basically with the ranged build, you're not really going for to use your ultimate, so inner fire provides this additional little bit of damage resistance. Um, perk up again for the health, play with fire to get burn burning rounds, and pyromaniac to increase those burning rounds. And in this case, the two weapons you want to have is the uh, Lancer Shield and the uh, Hammer Burst. Fun fact, the one class that can actually benefit from the Hammer Burst. <laughs> and the reason simply is that you're pretty accurate on long range, 
they have a relatively decent chance to, to set the enemies on fire. Uh, you don't need to reload that often. It's actually very, very handy to use the, uh, red, uh, the hammer burst. And you basically never, ever run out of ammo as soon as you start perking that um, uh, ammo regen perk. People have been using a Scorcher build. I have tested it myself numerous times. I'm not happy with it at all. Uh, I have basically the, 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 the main issue you're going to have with it is um, you probably have to swap out Inner Fire with uh, the Scorcher Mastery card. And while it may be somewhat efficient against bosses, the usual thing that happens is that you're either being crossfired by other enemies and dying, or that the boss is still gonna smash you, or you're just burning yourself to the ground. And the only way to counter it is with Soothing Warmth, and I've tried it, and it's pointless, because you have to be so close that you still keep burning yourself, and either the boss is gonna kill you, or the enemies will still shoot you down. So it's, in my opinion, the Scorch build is not useful. Maybe you have more success. I've tried it numerous times. I have never had any success or any greater success than with just generally going for the range build and keep shooting the enemy or the boss from, from, any, from anywhere where I want to be. So that's kind of like what I suggest. Regarding the other cards, Burned Recharge, it's so bad that it's actually really not useful. It's 6%. It's basically nothing. So I recommend to never use it. Uh, burn boost, you're basically almost never getting into a situation that you melee kill and burning enemy and then use your weapon to already do the do additional damage and I mean it's only going to be 60%. So it's it's really not not useful at all. Scorcher Mastery explained before, fuel tanks you don't need it because um, you will have enough ammo as soon as you get that ammo perk up. Uh, killing time, as explained before, is for the other build. Torch tackle for the other build, damage dash for the other build. Uh, just to explain, killing time extends the ultimate duration for every kill. Torch tackle burns them and does more damage when they are burning. In which case, once you start tackling enemies during the ultimate, they already burn from the range of your burning radius from the ultimate. So in that case, you do a, automatically the additional 275% damage when tackling them. And then damage dash, since you're constantly running around in the ultimate, this is basically constantly going to give you 40% damage resistance. Defensive tackle is... I don't know, They it was broken all the time, it still is, I guess, or the passive is still broken because you already get steam for just tackling an enemy, and the 60% additional steam you would get would basically just fill it up to 100% instant instead of just 50%, for, but it's like, it's kind of pointless. Uh, glow and slow can be somewhat helpful uh, in a way, I guess, if you really want to slow down the enemies. But I have used it in the past, and I just figured this kind of setup for this uh, range build is better than use it, than swapping out any of these cards for glow and slow. So I personally don't use it anymore. You don't need melee resistance. You're not really gonna be in melee range, or otherwise they are already dead or staggered or whatever. So it's it's kind of like useless. Steam engine is not gonna help you because they will already burn anyways as soon as you get close to them. If you're doing the tackle smash build. And Haymaker is pointless because <laughs> you don't need to stun these drones and you don't need to stun them for longer and you don't need to do additional damage. They just die quickly enough. So it's it's pointless to really use Haymaker. So that's about the Brawler, uh, pretty much. I guess there's nothing else to explain. Gunner, I haven't used Gunner for a long time, but the new kind of setup that you want to use with the new Lambents and uh, Locust-type enemies is prob probably kind of like the one I have showcased here. So you want to still stick to Reflect rather to quickly take out enemies uh, that are firing at you, especially something like a, a Stump or a Kestrel or a Guardian. You want to actually use Serrated Edge, although I kind of like... Uh, basically... Uh, <laughs> how to explain? I found it to be pointless, but because the Mulcher was actually better before they nerfed it into the ground and before the Locust enemies appeared and the Lambents appeared. But now, since you're more or like better off with an explosive kind of build, you actually probably want to use the Rated Edge because eventually you will start dealing enough damage with it to, to the bleed. And uh, you can potentially stun them with the Concussive Explosives if they get too close, in which case the Rated Edge is pretty fast to stun them. So that's kind of like why the Rated Edge has become useful. 
Bait armor is kind of obvious, that's like the go-to card with Gunner to keep the damage resistance going. Concussive explosives can be absolutely devastating against any kind of boss, or if just simply the enemies get too close, because then they instantly stop shooting at you and they can just keep blasting your way through, for instance, with a, uh, with a rocket salvo, which is also the reason why I have heavy capacity here equipped as well, so you don't have to recharge your uh, salvo too often. And with the salvo, as long as you keep hitting enemies, due to the passive, you keep getting back your health. So that's kind of like your go-to setup at the moment, I would say. It might not be perfect because I haven't actually played this kind of setup yet, but I have seen it being played and it seemed to be kind of handy to use that kind of setup. Um, Mulcher Mastery has to be nerfed into the ground, and it's not as useful anymore. The team resist can be fun, uh, since you have uh, basically you're going to be invulnerable for a short amount of time as, as, as soon as this is triggered, as soon as the ultimate is triggered and it affects your teammates as well, but it's only 6 seconds so I would say it's probably not the best card to go for anymore um, Heavy Deflect is not really going to be useful since you're just going to go down too quickly Heavy Charger is no longer going to be useful, it used to be useful in a way with the old uh, Mulcher build but uh, not that much anymore. Grace period, well, it can be fun since you get revived and you're just straight up invulnerable, but you can still get grabbed from bosses or something like it. They can just rip you apart even if you are invulnerable. So a funny card, but probably not useful. There's probably better cards to go for. And ultimate battery, kind of like similar to heavy charger, is uh, can be fun to play with, but the, uh, the allies need to be close. So it's not really going to be that helpful for you. Soul Survivor, well, obviously only if you're alone. So it's not useful for a full horde run. Um, blast Shields, uh, nope, not really. You're still going to go down too quickly, even if you resist. Uh, explosive damage, same applies to your teammates. Flash Freeze, well, it can be funny to freeze the enemies, or especially like boss enemies, pretty quickly. But there's just better cards to go for now, and the enemies have been nerfed enough that they freeze quickly enough unless uh, heavy damage is nerfed for your party which is only the case in one daily modifier um, freeze resist pointless uh, <laughs> I mean the ice sign is the only one so really not worth going for this unless you have something like uh, freezing grenadiers um, in which case you might consider actually using it so you don't die too quickly but uh, generally, really not that useful. Fun fact, practice every day can be useful if uh, basically you trigger your ultimate, you can just kind of like keep spamming the torque bow in a way and it's gonna do some serious kind of damage. But I believe there's better cards to use than practice every day. Phoenix armor, uh, pfft, I mean, if so, you, you get back up, you get steam, and you instantly lose steam probably again because you get hit. So it's, nah, it's not not useful in my opinion. Heavy Shell, uh, well, I used to use it, um, but I feel like to reflect the projectiles, they're not going to bleed them. That's the problem. So basically, they're not that useful. However, in theory, you could could do something like a stun lock build with concussive rounds here or concussive explosives, but I feel like it just won't cut it. There's just because of the limitation of how many cards you can select, it's probably not that thing you want to use anymore. It used to be relatively okay in the past, but I would say in the meantime, it's like mm, you're probably better off with other cards. Uh, you don't need grab magnet, it's like, this card is like, just, I don't know, it's like a beginner card or something. It's like the same thing as with uh, Anchor. And tanks in the G, well, you don't really need the tank, the damage assistance, and you have, still have to be close to pilot to actually have taken effect from it, so not really that useful. So that's probably more or less the card setup you want to use with uh, Gunner nowadays. Then we come to pilot. Uh, demanding a weapon locker, definitely, but probably one of the strongest classes, uh, if not the strongest class, simply because of the hammer. 
since it buffs your uh, drop shot damage and it keeps stunning enemies regardless of where they are, including bosses. This hammer car is absolutely crazy. And if you keep stacking this up with healing explosives and aggressive armor, you can just shoot around. You get damaged, whatever. You will damage an enemy anyways, you get, you get back some health because of healing explosives. And if you land it properly, you even get some stim back. So you could instantly have a second shield again. And you basically, with every shot, keep getting that back. And you keep stunning the enemies. So there's little the enemies can actually do against you. And since you can even stun a Swarmic, you can take probably take out the Swarmic on your own. And since... Uh, um, pilot eventually gets a perk to um, increase the ammo capacity with a boom shot. You can literally take out a swarm with ease, which is probably one of the hardest bosses to kill. And you can just stun lock anything else. And if it still doesn't want to die, well, then you have bleeding mulcher to just keep bleeding the bosses or whatever is bothering you, basically. So. Fun fact, I'm really only using one weapon on the silverback because basically the silverback is almost never going to be used. All you need is one weapon locker with four drop shots in it and a boom shot as your secondary weapon and you're basically good to go on your own. And cold finish is just so that uh, you have, a, for instance, a boss on a low health, then you can just quickly freeze it and then finish it off. So that's kind of like the idea. And you can, you have a... Um, a talon as at your disposal so it's really just what is it two three bullets and the enemy is instantly frozen it really t doesn't take much so that's quite a, why i still run with cold finish you don't necessarily have to do it if you really want to you can go with silverback salvo to extend the duration of your silverback a little bit and have some more fun running around with it but you're still way better off just drop shot spamming around basically the old setups pretty much included something like healing tri shot, but it's no longer useful in my opinion. You, your silverback, if you handle it properly, won't take too much damage and you should be good to go. Wingman is pointless, you're usually five people and not two or less. Initiator, once again, a pretty pointless card. You don't need deep pockets, you already get extended ammo from the perk, so it's pointless. Silverback Scorcher is kind of like a really, really pointless card on your silverback. Enforcer Expert is better in Escape, not really useful in Horde. Exploding Boss Kill, explosive, muni explosive Munitions and Healing Munitions, all of these are kind of like uh, sort of pointless cards on your Silverback. You're, as told, still better off just drop shot spamming around. And the Quick Ice Cannon is also... It's, it's all these kind of like Silverback cards are not going to be near as devastating as if you just drop shot spamming around. And well, rear armor, you're usually facing the enemy, so it's not really useful either. So that's the kind of like setup that I'm currently using with pilot, and it can be absolutely devastating in in 1 to 50 hordes. And that brings us down to veteran, probably the most boring class. Uh, while you can execute enemies and be invulnerable, you probably generally just never want to use it. I still see so many people running around with brutal efficiency. No, it's not brutal efficiency. Yes, it is brutal efficiency to keep recharging their ultimate, but it's so not useful. It's it's absolutely pointless to use it. Veteran does so much damage that you really don't have to use brutal efficiency. You just it's a waste of card. You seriously just want to be more helpful for your teammates or yourself, and you want to output way more damage. And that's basically what Custom Lancer and Hatchet Master are gonna do. If you buy a Lancer GL and you place that shot in a relatively good spot, you get your ultimate back instantly. The same thing is with the long shot. You have to nail like, what, four headshots and you have to back your ultimate instantly because of Headshot Monster. These two guards, cards combined are doing so much for your ultimate that eventually you can basically get your ultimate back within the same wave and use it again within the same wave. So you can basically really just run the ultimate every wave. And focus just keeps on extending the duration. And uh, once you are in the ultimate, if the engineer is kind enough and gives you a locker, just go spam your long shots. Don't even bother about using the red lens. So just take long shot in your hand, sit next to your uh, weapon locker, keep spamming it and stay in cover with Duckin, you're just going to be too paired with Band of Brothers, absolutely invulnerable. Your teammates can benefit from Band of Brothers to get some stim. 
this class is like an aimbot in itself. You really don't have to do much. You just sit on cover, get a locker with some long shots, do a few manual snipes when your ultimate runs out, and you can just keep spamming the ultimate again. You can use your dancer GL to do some heavy damage to if you to, to like clustered up enemies if you really want to get back the ultimate even quicker. And you're basically already said you don't need defensive stim, takes too long to even get there. Uh flank him. I was using it instead of custom lancer for a time, but there's too few chances to actually benefit from it. So I'm not using that one anymore. For for instance, for uh, against something like a matriarch, it can be useful, but that's pretty much also the only thing. You don't need even more uh, ammo capacity or a greater magazine. And actually, you don't need that because in the ultimate you're just gonna fire it through anyways. It's actually going to be rather counterproductive since you kind of like lose your uh, um, active reloads outside the ultimate before you even emptied the mag. So standard rifle mags are pointless card. Explosive resistance, well, you don't need it. Last ditch could potentially be useful, but you're putting yourself way too much risk if you're really going for that one. And it's still only a 90% damage increase, so I, I recommend not doing it. Brutal efficiency, I was told they should kind of like ditch this card. Uh, friendlier fire. Um, well, I, usually you, you don't need it because there's enough space for five people to sit to the ultimate in theory. So you actually don't need the uh, increased uh, kind of... Uh, radius of your ultimate for your teammates to benefit from and lancer stock well you already have basically kind of like zero recoil during the ultimate so it's a pointless card to be to really use and i'm our softball tank classes um so we go down to support um combat medic um is probably the best class to use lancer gl with um the, the overdoing it card is like the wild card uh, it depends on what kind of like uh, teammates you have on. I keep swapping between overdoing it and get up. Overdoing it, I would use if a blade master is in the team, and get up, I would use if an infiltrator is in the team. So these are like the the the, the wild cards I would be using, and the other four dodge, helpful headshots, custom lancer, and perfect condition are the actual cards I keep using every time, uh, because that will provide enough damage resistance that you can even stand a sniper shot. Helpful headshots. Paired with a Lancer GL, you can stand in front of a Mulcher sign with double damage, keep shooting in the head, and it will not be able to down you. Unless, of course, you run out of ammo <laughs> and you have to reload. But other than that, you can really just stand in front of it. It's that crazy. Custom Lancer buffs the damage. You have two damage perks again with Combat Medic. You get an additional 30% from the passive. So pretty, pretty, pretty crazy, actually, if you pair this up with a Lancer GL. Um, and these are just damage resistance cards, obviously. Intervention, while 20 meters is quite a range, usually the teammates are already revived or somebody else kind of like steals your kill to actually benefit from it. This is more an escape card, in my opinion, not really a card that's useful for Horde. Um, I've seen people tossing frag grenades around to keep spamming their revive ultimate. This can actually be funny if you use team repair and you have a terrible engineer in your team. Um, but other than that, I don't really see the point of keep spamming the grenades. With this kind of setup that I have here with the custom Lancer GL, you should have uh, the custom Lancer GL. With the Lancer GL, you should be able to get your ultimate back with relative ease and don't have to spam any grenades. Grenade pouch actually is pointless in my opinion, even if you were running suppressive recharge. Um, unless you really just want to keep spamming around frag grenades like a maniac to just hope and to keep recharging your your ultimate, but you're just going to be way more effective to refill like stim with for you and your teammates with a lancer just firing around or a lancer GL just firing around. So I recommend not using the the, the grenade cards and healing bounty. Well, you're already healing your teammates with helpful headshots, so healing bounty is going to be use, uh, useless. And Razor Satch, it's basically not useful because you're rarely going to be under 50% health because of the absurd amount of damage resistance and the healing capabilities. Therefore, Razor Satch is not used anymore. 
and well modified snob you don't really need you have your land search shield that's going to be way more effective and that's pretty much about it there's not really much to tell about combat many just keep in mind the team revive has a maximum range so if your teammate's actually going to be too far away it won't reach it it won't reach him and it won't revive him uh, it only happened to me twice on dam when i was brawler and running around um, but it's it, the radius of this revive is about 50 meters so, so it's pretty pretty large uh, uh, probably is rarely going to happen to you actually that brings us to check and in my case i'm going full ego mode <laughs> without actually any beneficial stuff for teammates the top four cards are set the fifth one is a wild card i personally use super upgrade to get the ultimate back quicker but you can swap it out out for instance with something like sacrifice to be a bit uh, more helpful for your teammates um, or you can also play safe and go optimize or if you really feel like smelting weapons is the thing you want to do but keep in mind this is actually no longer needed because the taps were buffed so heavily that you really don't even need a forge anymore and the forge is going to be a waste of time but um yeah so backstab keeps extending your ultimate pretty 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 strong card um Rampage is gonna apply bleeding even though broken for pretty much any enemy It's still one of the best cards you can actually go for explosive hijack to Cancel your ultimate whenever you want for instance when the wave is over or to just Rush against the boss enemy to refill your ultimate quickly or a group of enemies or whatever and mind control expert to actually have your uh, Hijacked enemies to be alive longer and separate upgrade is I'm using that as told especially if to get my ultimate back quicker. Portable resupply, just keep in mind that this one is actually going to cloak jack when carrying um, weapons. But other than that, it's gonna be pretty much pointless. Usually you don't really have to refill any ammo that uh, you're carrying around. And the uh, repair speed, you usually don't need it. Jack is relatively fast with repairing if he actually needs to repair anything. So that's kind of like a waste of a card. Um, then the healing reach and the healing upgrades ever since they nerfed check both of these cards are a bit uh, kind of like a bit useless um, just keep in mind healing upgrade is healing yourself not your teammate and uh, healing reach can't really go through walls anymore so and you actually have to be still close to the to your teammate to 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 basically start jolting him so both of these cards are, in my opinion, useless nowadays. Um, I have been doing kind of like a list of how the bleeding works on each enemy and which are the best ones. But this is obviously outdated because it was done before the Locust and Lambent update. But the best enemies you can probably hijack are still Boomshot Sign, Mulch Sign, now also any kind of Torquebow Locust type enemy. So Palace Guards or Lambent... Uh, Lambent Palace cards or whatever they're called, Lambent Elite Hunter, or I don't know. I don't know the exact name, but basically anything with a Torque Bow in hand except for Elite Hunters themselves. Because for whatever reason, their Torque Bows are very, very strong. So they're actually a really good target. And then the, for the first few waves, you probably want to high check something like an Imago. Um, because they actually can do pretty serious damage. And... Um, Something like a Salvo DR1 or Deep, what is it, a DR1 Devastator. Those are probably like the four to five kind of enemies you want to hide check. And fun fact, the uh, boss kill sign actually isn't too bad because there the bleeding is working correctly. It's one of the few enemies where the bleeding is working correctly. Um, so it's kind of like still a pretty, pretty uh, uh, good enemy to hide check. That's about more or less the enemies that you want to know of. Then Mechanic. Uh, ever since it was buffed, um, and that's kind of like the setup that I'm using. You don't necessarily have to use this one, you can swap it around a little bit. But this basically grants me the greatest turret that you can have with uh, the bleeding rounds and the additional damage, the 50% damage it does as long as it is, uh, or 40% damage as long as it is uh, over 50% health, paired with also the fortification damage perk. You will actually do kind of like 90% more damage and include bleeding to something like boss enemies as well. 
And I just touched my controller a little bit too hard somewhere, so it disconnected. So I gotta reconnect my controller really quick. There we go. Um, efficient fabrication, well, Mechanic is the only one who has it. Something like this. So it's kind of like a must-have card if you play Mechanic. People are expecting you to have it, so... That's basically the only reason why I'm using it. <laughs> because, in theory, I wouldn't use it. I would use something like a damage resistance on your barriers. Or the, the, actually, probably even the, the reinforced fabrication, so they have more health. But since they're kind of like expecting it, that's why I'm using it. And healing repair, you can just run around on the battlefield, keep repairing your stuff, and you, you're you really hard to brought down to zero health that way. And ingenuity just helps repairing them a little bit faster and at a less cost. Um, best friends. The, as far as I remember it, Jack actually has to have the healing beam on you to profit from it, so it's not really helpful. You're, it's, it's the same buffs as with Ingenuity, but Ingenuity just counts all the time, so you would have to go for both cards at once if you really want to actually benefit from it. And otherwise, I really just recommend you going for Ingenuity. Personal Defense is an escape card. It's actually one of the best escape cards you can have. For Horde, I recommend to just focus on your fortifications and ignore this one. And uh, armor plating is really just for re resistance of all, you, all your uh, fortifications. That would be one of the cards I would have chosen if I were not be going for efficient fabrication or as told the reinforced fabrication. Custom robotics paired with personal defense, perfect for escape, not for Horde. Uh, efficient sentry. Uh, no, you don't need to have less cost <laughs> for your sentries to be refilled. It would be better if it would fa refill the sentries faster. But in my opinion, the sentry is pointless anyways. So don't bother about this. Uh, once again, a precision weapons resistance card, which is going to be useless because they one-shot you anyways. Robotic porting, once again, something that you pair with, with custom robotics and personal defense in escape. Uh, flow actually can be useful if you pair it with um, healing repair, because this will actually allow you to absorb even more damage and you're going to be even more invulnerable while repairing out there, especially if uh, the 2.5 damage uh, poison kicks in, but uh, since we're limited on cards, I swapped this one away and went with Shredder Rounds and Overload instead, so no longer a card I use, and Overclocked Locker really isn't needed, I mean of course it can be nice for something like a Demolitionist, but if they're playing properly they really don't need the additional reload charge for the, uh, for the lockers there, and well, you don't necessarily have to get back to your ultimate that often the only reason i'm using the ultimate is against bosses like sentinels or something like that or if it gets hairy so usually you don't need to have your ultimate back quicker and that's kind of like how you play the mechanic nowadays or at least how i play it feel free to swap around the cards to your needs that's just my personal kind of setup robotics expert kind of similar um more based on doing damage which is why I'm using Bloody Deer 1 and Experimental Weapons, because the uh, M-Bar stuns enemies, which is great for your Deer 1. So you can, for instance, stun something like a Stump, which already does more or less decent damage, and uh, your Deer 1 can just finish it off with ease. And with the M-Bar, as soon as they get to lower health, you basically just start one-shotting the enemies with this Experimental Weapons card. And for the first few waves, the overkill is going to be handy, in the sense of that they just kill enemies quicker because as soon as they're in a somewhat lower health like a sire they just die quickly enough for a drone or whatever and you doesn't don't necessarily have to waste all of your ammo of the m bar so that's why i i'm actually going for experimental weapons and i'm using global overclock with um uh, um with robotics expert um simply because that actually is noticeable a lot and you kind of like don't have to upgrade the lockers immediately. They can probably your teammates can probably work with a level three locker for the for the for the beginning, and you can focus bringing out a few barriers here and there to protect your team quicker, since you're going to like the reinforced fabrication from the mechanic, and your fortifications are going to be a bit little bit more expensive to initially build. So this is like a good um, starting card, if you want to say so. So that's why I'm generally using it. And uh, precision repairs is pretty obvious. In that case, you just never have to repair anything except taps. And that's also the only reason talking about taps, why I'm using Combat Engineer, since that one will 
um, repair the tabs with like light speed basically in a way <laughs> and you can also if you have some decoys that are heavily damaged you can quickly repair those as well and that's the kind of setup that I rec recommend to everybody um, you're going to be a very efficient engineer if you keep sniping you can even go in, eventually build your own locker and have embers stored in there to just keep sniping away and keep repairing uh, bloody support, in my opinion, is really, really useless. Um, the bleeding is very, very low. Uh, even though it says 35% bleed, it's actually a very, very low bleeding amount. Uh, so personally, I don't recommend using bloody support. I mean, you even have to have your uh, ultimate ready for this, this to even take effect. So that's kind of like why I find it to be pointless. Uh, homebody, it was somewhat useful in a few runs here and there. For instance, I don't know, if something just won't really be help here, then you can go for Homebody. Um, but uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of like more of a wild card that you can use sometimes to play around with. Um, we were considering that potentially that the tabs are stacking if they are close to each other, because there is certain occurrences, I believe, of something like Overload, where the tabs could be within 10 meters. Um, or basically you could you could be within two taps at the same time and get 64% damage resistance but we weren't quite sure uh, reactor is another case it, it just felt like we were pretty pretty like damage resistant on that map so that's why you felt like homebody can be useful but we aren't 100% sure here if that's really the case so that's just a guess in the wild and also a thing to note about the bloody dr1 if there is a modifier that reduces bleeding damage bloody dr1 overrides that it doesn't care about the bleeding damage it feels like as if, as if the, the dr1 itself is like its own unit and it's like more like of an enemy unit and it seems like that's why it's not affected from the from the from the bleeding kind of uh, uh, modifier i've seen uh, from Shoni in the code that when they do something like re reduced damage from players They usually do something like cock team in the code and I believe the dr1 is technically an enemy And that's why it is not affected. That's just a guess. I'm not 100% sure But I can already prove to you that it definitely does work And uh, like kind of like override the bleeding modifier the reduced bleeding modifiers if they are the, are there um, explosive kill shot. The, the explosion is not too, not enough to actually be worth using this card. <laughs> well, you don't need melee damage resistance as an engineer. It's pointless, especially not with a robotics expert. Um, nerves to steal. I mean, if you're surrounded by enemies, if that's really the case, then you're gonna go down. So nerves of steel is not gonna be useful for you. Parting if is disgustingly terrible. Um, I was hoping that it would way, do way more damage for attacking enemies, but it's actually pretty, pretty bad. So it's not useful either. Inspired sniping, you don't necessarily have to get your, back your ultimate that quickly, and it's not a lot either, so inspired sniping is not really going to do it. Um, well, heavy resistance, again, you don't really need a resistance card for this kind of class. Uh, global sentry upgrade, as told, I'm not a sentry fan. They're not really useful in my opinion, so I never use it. And for supporting is once again just a um, escape kind of card, so you don't need to use this one either. So that probably covers uh, Robotics Expert. Then we go down to Tactician. Um, a versatile class again. Um, many, many different options to choose from. Probably pretty hard to say what is the most beneficial. But for anyone out there who thinks Lancer Shield spamming is the best way to do it, just stop doing it, it's pointless. You're gonna hit check shit with it, just don't do it. Instead, at least spam around with the boom shot or the drop shot. So that's why I'm actually using a resupply speed loader, uh, paired with shredder and recharge bounty, as well as resupply duration. And fun fact, just so that you know, with resupply speed loader, you don't have to stay inside the ultimate to take effect, you just need to have it activated. So you don't have to stay within this little ring to to keep affecting you. You can still spam your 
whatever gun you're holding. And this is best paired with a drop shot. But just don't spam it too quickly or it's gonna break. <laughs> That's actually a case that can happen. But resupply speed loader compared with, uh, pair <clears throat> paired up with resupply duration and shredder. And with the explosive uh, perk maxed out, you can really devastate any enemy that's too close. For instance, something like a boss that's getting a little bit too close. You can really destroy these enemies with the drop shot. I'm actually really surprised nobody's doing this kind of strategy. Because it really is devastating. And I mean really devastating. You're spamming out so many drop shots in that short amount of time. That it's, it's completely going to melt the boss, whatever it is. And um, that's kind of like why I always go with resupply speed loader shredder and resupply duration. Discipline is just nice, especially for the beginning. It buffs your long shot, it buffs any kind of ballistic weapon. In theory, it buffs your Lancer GL as well. Um, this is more like a wild card that you can use for anything else as well. For instance, like resupply healing module or resupply amplifier to have an increased area covered. And the same kind of thing goes with Recharge Bounty. You can as well swap this one out of Resupply Healing Module and or Resupply Amplifier to um, kind of like have a greater area protected. Resupply Healing Module is actually going to provide enough damage resistance and healing uh, abilities that you are kind of invulnerable while it is active or while you are inside. Um, so resupply healer module should be underestimated it's a very very strong card and it's generally just used for resisting uh kind of like any uh, kind of enemy damage that's uh, coming in at the, the time period that uh, uh, resupply is activated cooperation is like the gears 4 card but worse since you yourself are not going to do more damage it's just your teammates so i Personally, don't recommend using it since it's also uh, only 30%. Interrogation, obviously only best paired with a uh, demolitionist, otherwise it's not really going to be that useful. Even though it can be funny to mark the entire map <laughs> for like, what is it, 12 seconds. Um, but um, generally, you're just better off marking your target that you're aiming at. And uh, that's it's kind of like more of a card that you want to use if you have a demolitionist in your team that can just spam the ultimate down to any kind of enemy. Uh, resupply amplifier we were talking about before. When a boost is an escape card, you don't necessarily have to resist uh, explosive damage. So it's not going to help much, this 32%. Um, grenade pouch. I just don't see that uh, Tactician really is a grenade spamming class in Horde. You're just better off doing any kind of explosive damage with the boom shot or the drop shot or something like that. You don't necessarily have to mark additional targets, if so, just go for interrogation already. Custom snob is more useful in escape as well. This one is once again an escape card. Um, huddle up. Why it can be funny to refill a lot of ammo at a small amount of time and if you pair it with a resupply amplifier and discipline and stuff like that, then you can actually have a lot of fun with this. For instance, with a long shot, since you get a ton of long shot bullets back in a very short period of time. But um, not really a card that's going to be that useful since it, it relies on your teammates staying inside it. So personally, not something I would suggest. And Modified Hammer Burst, in my opinion, is not strong enough to be worth it compared or paired up with Disciplined. You're still better off just spamming around with the long shot. And a Situational Awareness just doesn't work. Uh, it's not marking it as if enemies properly, so it's pointless as well. Um, I guess the thing to note about Discipline is that it is broken as well. Um, it doesn't increase the damage 4-6% up to a maximum of 100%. Instead, it is 60% up to a maximum of 200%. But potentially, they're going to nerf it eventually. I'm surprised they still haven't. <laughs> uh, but... Just keep that in mind. Considering it gets nerfed, Disciplined is definitely not a go-to card anymore. And keep considering something like a Resupply Healing Module or Resupply Amplifier or something like that to go for. And that covers all the support classes. Now we're going down to the promotional ones. Um, these are uh, not necessarily the best classes you want to go for, with the exception of Slugger. Um, since you usually have a better alternative, for instance Architect, there's two better engineers out there. I'm still going to go through, through them though, 
Um, that's kind of like the, the way I play Architect. Because fun fact, the hologram, if it works, and you pair it with that deception, you are really going to wreck these enemies. Especially if, if you have a long shot or something like that. Or if a swarm is co coming uh, towards you, just have it face around. You see the back blisters, shoot with the long shot into a back blister and it should pop. And this should, should deal some massive damage to the swarm as well. Um, and this is also the reason why I'm using Hologram, hologram Lifetime and Hologram Extend. And Hologram Extend is actually also even affected from sentries. So you can really have <laughs> some kind of ultimate out there that lasts for multiple waves. Sometimes even for like 10 waves or something, depending on how good you hit the targets, how well your team is skipping and stuff like that. So it can be counterproductive and funny, and it can be actually very helpful depending on where the ultimate is at and how well you're hitting enemies. And you can actually benefit your team. The problem just is you still have to probably repair a bunch of things. And that's kind of like where Architect is lacking a bit. It doesn't really have any damage resistance. It only has to regenerate the field. And in theory, with stim capacity, you could have a lot of stim. But it's still going to get rid of relatively quickly. And at least repair, re repair efficiency is going to help you repair those a little bit better. I used to use Flow, but I just noticed that the ultimate is better. So I swapped it away and instead went for Hologram Extend and the Deception card. So that I can actually do some serious damage as well a little bit in the, the meantime, like outside repairing hours, if you want to say so. And in theory, obviously, Root Kid would extend or like uh, regain your ultimate quicker. But there's only so many cards that you can select from. So that one just didn't make the cut to it. And top of the line just won't really be worth it for the architect since uh, you don't you can't stack it with anything else like for uh, for the mechanic with the turret or something like that so in my opinion it's not really the useful card you want to go for considering you want to just completely abandon the ultimate you can swap out uh, hologram extent and deception and swap in something like flow on top of the line or stem capacity so that's kind of like the alternative you could choose from if you really want to play architect in horde um protector You'd basically just have to work a lot with the uh, with the drop shield. There's obviously only six cards you can choose from, and I decided that the Nasher mod is the one that has to go. Um, simply because I feel like you're better off running around with a Breaker Mace to, uh, to to do additional bleeding and additional melee damage, similar to like a Blade Master. Um, the problem just really is that you're way less efficient with. Uh, with the protector in comparison to the blade master the class is played pretty similarly to the blade master uh, with the only exception that you really have to get in there pop that drop shield and stay inside the drop shield and have the enemies come towards you instead of with the blade master going towards the enemy so that's a little bit of the difference you have with uh, with protector you can kind of like play with heavy weapons but that's just like the standard build i don't know what to do with it <laughs> build if you want to say so. Um, just generally, Protector in my eyes is uh, better used in Escape since you initially profit from bleeding in Escape in comparison to where uh, the Blade Master needs to be in Venom to profit from, from uh, bleeding damage. So that's kind of like the difference here. So not really a Horde class that you want to use unless you really want to put yourself to a challenge. But uh, yeah. Now when it goes to Slugger, well, this class has been buffed uh, quite a lot since Operation 7. And uh, they already nerfed it again. Uh, the nerfed card is Tough Skin. This one used to work for explosives as well, and I don't know why they reworked it back to be fixed, basically. Um, because I actually feel like the uh, complete invulnerability against any kind of explosive is what made this class really that strong um, because basically you just toss around any kind of grenade anywhere and you just wouldn't go down except for a very very uh, few exceptions uh, but basically obviously you need grenade proficiency this is your must-have card you need grenade capacity and you kind of like really want tough skin and power shot and those kind of cards uh, for instance, tough skin. No, tough skin. Not anymore. But with the passive for fifty percent explosive damage resistance compared with the perk inside the game or the match, 
for another 30 percent damage resistance gets you up to 80 percent damage resistance against anything uh, against explosives and uh, 64 percent damage resistance against uh, anything that's within 15 meters so really a card you want to use actually to be able to actually run around there and regarding grenade proficiency just keep in mind this one doesn't apply to frags only uh, only the explosives uh, apply to the to the frags um, but um, the, the increased damage also applies to flame grenades and shock grenades so flame, uh, flame grenade for instance is pretty good against the warden or something like a flock and uh, the, the, the frags themselves pretty much against anything else you can actually completely destroy a swarm mech with this um, but yeah, obviously your kind of goal is to just keep spamming grenades, keep buying grenades, they're only 500 bucks. So just keep spamming those around and once the, the wave is finished, you can start planting with uh, lethal preparations. You can plant up to six grenades and, um, and that's kind of like uh, how you want to do it. And with power shot, I mean, yeah, sure, if you don't want to toss grenades only, then just grab a long shot or something and uh, try to shoot enemies with the long shot. <laughs> That's kind of like what power shot is for. Um, I just felt like impact receiver is not going to be worth it for Horde because eventually they do too much damage and you have to be within a close enough range to really benefit from impact receiver. So... No, that's, that's just the card that I swapped out, basically. So it's not going to be useful enough for the horde since you're just better off going to be grenade spamming around kind of strategy thing uh, one thing to note about the ultimate um, it stuns enemies and the ultimate is actually considered melee damage so in theory when uh, the uh, triple melee damage is uh, around as a daily modifier you are actually going to do triple damage during the ultimate and with power shot another 60 percent so the ultimate is actually pretty good for triple melee damage uh, kind of um, challenges. But that's already about everything that you can have there. So that's just a little uh, side note. And uh, that brings us to the last class, basically, which is Striker. And um, once again, this is a class that benefits best from triple melee damage. In which case it can actually be pretty pretty good um, in my case i swapped out gsd because i just felt like the explosion is not doing enough damage because it's not as much damage as for instance the marksman does because the marksman um, has a greater base damage with all this kind of like ambush and uh, exploit weakness and modified long watch the shot itself is so strong that it is also way more explosive damage around it and GSD doesn't have it because you're just doing generally less damage with uh, with Striker. <coughs> but um, <coughs> kind of uh, how you can play Striker is um, you just base everything off your ultimate. So with melee rush, you kind of like kill a few smaller enemies to get your ultimate back quicker, and then you use your ultimate paired up with a breaker mace to stun lock enemies and keep getting back stim by just keep hitting them that's kind of like how you can survive in close range a little bit as soon as double damage kicks in you're still gonna struggle uh, a little bit so it's not perfect but at least you can do a little bit something this is once again more an escape class um, especially because of first strike um, usually in hordes, enemies are just firing, uh, your teammates are just firing around and hitting an enemy a little bit and then first strike already doesn't apply anymore because the enemy actually has to be at 100% health um, to do 100% additional damage. So uh, the only really way uh, where first strike is going to benefit you is if you, if you use something like a boom shot or a long shot against a full health enemy. Um, so that's the reason why in escape it's going to be better. Because in Horde, eventually the double health poison is going to kick in and that way first drag is kind of like going to be obsolete in a, in a way. And that brings it down to everything. I hope I managed to cover everything that's needed. Of, of, of course, if you have any questions, if you want to know anything in detail, um, just post a question below in the comments and i'll try to answer it 
Once again, I'm not gonna really discuss any other card of setup that might be more beneficial. This is just the way I'm gonna use it. If you have any other better way, go for it. It's your choice, your decision, what card setup you built. Um, that's just the card setups that I have been using whenever I played Horde with this kind of classes. So yeah, um, I hope this helps a little bit. Once again, my controller is connected, perfect timing. And um, good luck with these kind of setups, I assume.